Here we go. You guys are live on candy camera. <laughs> that was like a reference from before I was even born. Okay, so we're looking at this guy. It says find a value, any value. Okay, so now we're thinking about some inequalities here. Okay, so it says write some solutions to the inequality first. Y is less than or equal to 9.2. That's your first piece. I want you to write a few, uh, a few solutions to that inequality. Then, this is where the tricky part comes in. Then I want you to write a solution to this inequality right here. Seven parentheses x minus or three minus x is greater than 14. Okay? You might have to do some work to that inequality to find your x values or where your solutions are going to fall. But I want you to think about what you've done in the past and think about how you might find the solution set for that one. Okay, once you find some solutions, you're going to pick your favorite one and you're going to come onto this link down here, right? So you're going to go boom, okay? What you need to do though is because I did this with first period, you're going to click the next button to like the second screen and you're going to, with your red dot, show me where your point for the 9.21, with the black dot, show me where your second inequality equation solution would be. I mean, inequality solution would be, okay? Boom, you're taking three minutes right now to find some solutions and then graph them on this guy here. Clock on me. Oh, I'm going to see what time I'm Claire Dillon. I'm Dillon. Eric Dunno. Eric is probably the best listener in class. Do you remember my favorite quote from Titanic? <laughs> Miss Percival, please call the. Please call the red team room. Ms. Percival, okay, so please it's call in the, the slideshow, um, uh, Jesse <laughs> or Claire. So it's the link to the um, the <laughs> the link to the Jamboard is on the slideshow. So you have to open up the slideshow, Claire. Okay, no problem, Jessica. You're fine. Okay, <laughs> Jessica, Julia, Reese's Pieces. Okay, Lando is here. Caleb is here. Jason is here. Brianna is here. Melina is here. Gina McGibbon is here. I missed him. Went right over her. Luke Elok is here. And Meryl. Where did Meryl go? Meryl. I know, right? It's crazy. Um, it's like Carl. Anybody watch The Walking Dead? That's how the dad on The Walking Dead always used to like call Carl and get Carl, and it would be like really annoying. So that's why I say Carl. That was kind of okay. Sorry about that. That was kind of weird. Take thirty more seconds. Oh no, someone made their circle bigger. <laughs> I like it. No, it's fine. And you know what? It's kind of funny. So if you like double click it, then. Oh, does it really not let you drag? Just, I mean, just try your best. It's not a big deal. Okay. Awesome. We're taking 15 more seconds. Carl. <laughs> I'm just going to keep saying that. That's going to be the thing today, guys. Okay, <laughs> let's take a look. So what we're going to do 
is, let's look at some of these red dots. So these red dots are these points that people are thinking are going to satisfy this, this um, inequality of x is less than 9.2. Okay, so a lot of people put like points like right after the 9 pick. Where is that point like called? Oh, at 9.2. Okay, so um, we're saying that it's going to be, we're looking at the inequality of y is uh, less than 9.2, or less than or equal to, sorry, 9.2. So people are saying 9.2 is a solution. I agree. Awesome. What are some other values that people are thinking would satisfy this guy? He's hungry. Satisfied. No, I, I don't know. I'm literally just talking out of my head. Okay. What if I said five? Oh my goodness, Julia, me and Julia, same brain. Five. Good. That would satisfy it because it's any number that's less than 9.2. So what if I said 11? Oh, darn it. What if I said one half? Because it's less than 9.2. What if I said negative 3? Yeah. Very good. Because when we're talking about these values here, we're talking about it goes forever and ever in this direction. Let me grab my mouse because I want to make sure I click the right thing. We have our point at 9.2, right? We have our closed dot at 9.2, and we go forever in this direction. So it would go through all of these negative values here. Good. Negative 3, negative 0.5, negative 1,000. Okay? Any number that is smaller than 9.2. Very good. Now, we need to write one solution to the inequality. 7 parentheses, 3 minus x is, great, is greater than 14. So I'm going to rewrite it over here. 7 parentheses 3 minus x is greater than 14. So here's the dealio. This was something that we sort of hit upon. Did we do this when we were in school last year? I'm pretty sure we did it like during distance. Did you guys do it during distance learning or did you do this in school last year? Or did you not do this last year? I did this on now. You did this on out. Oh, yeah. This is, I, it looked familiar. I thought we did it earlier this year. No, no, not yet. Um, it does look similar to what we did earlier in the year. So if I want to figure out some x values here, it's just like I would solve an equation. So what would I, what could I do to each side to get that x by itself on either side? Melina? Distribute. I could distribute. Good. I could say 21 minus 7x, minus 7x is greater than 14. 14. Okay, so then I'll do my next move to get that x by itself. Melina. Subtract 21. Very good. Subtract 21 from each side. I'm going to be left with Melina. Negative 7x is greater than negative 7. Okay, this is where the tricky part comes in. Okay. When we want to get that x by itself, what are we going to do to each side? Divide. By what? Negative 7. We have to divide by negative 7. Okay? And when we divide an inequality by a negative number or multiply, go ahead, Jason. It'll be just x. It'll be a positive 1. Good. It would get a positive 1 because we have minus divided by 7, divided by 7. But the trick about when we divide an inequality as opposed to an equal, like, a, like an equation, when we divide by a negative or multiply by a negative, we have to flip our sign or switch our sign so that it's opening the opposite way. So if you're looking at it this way, it's going to cancel out. We're going to be left with an x is now, and we're going to flip that sign so that it's now less than what values? What value? 7, negative 7 divided by negative 7 is? 1. A 1. So now our solution 
to this inequality is going to be x is less than 1. When we divide or multiply by a negative with an inequality, we have to switch or flip this, like the opening of the symbol. The gator is going to eat the opposite number now. So how are we going to call it? I have I have a Tony Story Tony Story. Listen, you guys, you guys not remember I used to teach second grade. Oh, that's what we did. We did it. And that's when you learn it is in second grade. Listen, I taught second grade. I did. Yes. Yes. Uh, you know, in not Newport. What am I talking about? In Plainville, at Linden. <laughs> Blending. Anyways, okay. So I have x is less than number than one. So what could be a solution to this inequality? Point five. Zero. Point five. Zero. Very good. Point five. Any negative. Zero. Any negative, negative number. Negative ten. Negative nine. Yeah. Negative seven. Yeah. What if I said this value? Point two five. Yes. Please put, give me a thumbs up. Yes. Very good. This guy is going to satisfy this solution set. We're going to satisfy this um, um, inequality because it is less than one. Good. So now we're going to have a little bit of a discussion before we move forward because we learned a few important pieces of information. First, we learn that when we divide or multiply by a negative, we need to switch our side. I don't know why I thought it. Good. So we go from like this guy to this guy. Yeah. Okay. So let's take a look at some of these discussion questions. You don't need to write these answers down. I just want to have them so that you know what we're talking about. Okay. Okay. So. We're looking at these discussions, okay? So, how did you know that a value you chose is a solution? So, I mean, you, you look at the sign and the sign tells you, right? Mm -hmm. But how could you prove, like, if I gave you a big, huge inequality, how could you prove if a point is a solution to the inequality? What could you do with that value? You can plug it in, right? Mm -hmm. So you can you can use your knowledge of signs. Right? So if you have a nice simple one of like x is less than three, you can just use your knowledge of like, hey, it has to be less than three, so any number smaller. But if you're given a big, like complicated one of like two parentheses, x minus seven, um, all over three is greater than seven. You can also plug it in and see if it's a true statement. So there's two ways that you can really, with inequalities, decide if it's a solution. If it's simple, make that like use your brain. If it's not, plug it in and solve. Is it a true statement? Okay. Then, what do we notice? So when we go back to this graph that we created here, so we created a graph for number one. This inequality of x is less, or y is less than or equal to 9.2, is this graph right here. So all of those solutions that we said, negative one, um, one, five, negative 10, what do we know, know about all those solutions in regards to this line? So these solutions, if I were to plot them on my point, on this, on this, on this uh, guy right here, I would have one at negative one, I'd have one at one, I'd have one at five, I'd have one at negative ten. What do we notice about those points? They're all smaller. They're all smaller than that 9.2, but also, like, geographically on this grid, they fall where? On the... One. They fall on the line. So just like when we're looking at an equation that we graph, solutions fall on that line. 
when you're looking at an inequality, the solutions to that inequality are also going to fall on the line. Okay? That's not the biggest, like, it's not like earth shattering. It's kind of common sense. But I wanted to draw some attention to it because when you have a graph like this and you say, and you're given this graph right here, and this is your inequality, and you don't know what the inequality actually is. Like, you, you don't know, like, the whole thing. And you know, I was to say to you, is four a solution to this inequality? You could say four. It falls on my line, so it must be a solution to my inequality. Okay? Solutions to inequalities fall on the line. Good. Last little bit here. Actually, there's a couple more things. Okay. So, on the number line, we can see that the solutions are values that are less than one. Right? So, that was for that second line. The solutions for those values were less than one. <clears throat> All the values in this in, form the solution set. So, when you're looking at another difference between equations and inequalities is that when you're talking about the a solution to an inequality, you're talking about multiple points, right? So if you have this inequality of x is less than or equal to 9.2, is there one exact value that's the solution? No, there's many. No, there's many, right? When you have an equation that looks like x is equal to 9.2, how many solutions do you have? One. You only have one. So instead of talking about so like a solution to an inequality as just saying it's a solution, we call it a solution set because we have a, it's a group of numbers that can satisfy that inequality. Because inequalities, solutions to inequalities, there's numerous ones. So you want to make sure that when we're talking about a solution to an inequality, we're going to try to use that term solution set because there's not any one very like one value. There's going to be multiple values there. Okay. Awesome. Fantastic. Last, that was the last little bit of that discussion. Nice job. So our learning targets for today. We have, okay, graphing the solution to an inequality in one variable. We're going to be creating some graphs today. Number two, we're going to solve one variable inequalities and interpret the solutions in the terms of, in the, in the context of a story. So we're going to be looking at an inequality with a story that belongs to it. And we're going to be talking about what those solutions mean in the context of the story, much like we've been doing since the beginning of the year. Context, context, context. Number three, understanding that the solution to an inequality is a range of values, not just one exact value. We have a solution set as opposed to x is equal to 9.2. x is greater than 9.2 or less than 9. Okay? Three pretty cool, I like those uh, nice manageable learning targets for us today. So if we're on slide number five, we're talking about an orchard. We're going on a trip to an orchard. There's two of them. There's like Lyman and there's Rogers, if we're talking about orchards around here. Yeah, I like that. Pretty cool, right? So we have our two orchards. Orchards A. Orchard A. It costs $9 per person and three chaperones must attend. So the number of students plus the three chaperones. And it costs $9 to get in. Okay? Next piece is Orchard B. It costs $10 per person, but there's only one chaperone that must go. So what I need you to do with both of these orchards is determine which one is going to be cheaper for you to attend, given different numbers of students. So A, B, right? You have to decide for oh, eight students. But when you go to Orchard A, how much is it going to cost? Eight students plus how many chaperones? So how many total people are you buying tickets for? You're buying 
Eleven. I'm talking about the eight. So what I want you to do is for each orchard, I want you to figure out which one is cheaper for each set of students. Okay? When we have eight students, when we have 12 students, when we have 30 students, which of the orchards is going to be cheaper? Every single person pays $9. Every single person pays $10. There's no different prices. Okay? I want you to take two minutes right now to calculate which of these orchards is cheaper for each scenario. The one from the first fifty. Oh, I didn't turn it down. Okay, so when we look at eight students going to the orchard, which one, which one of our orchards was cheaper if you found like the total price to get? So it's for the students, right? So it's for everybody. Okay, okay Jason. Right, orchard A. Orchard A? Melinda, what were you thinking? Okay, so we have a, we have a discrepancy. So let's think about the work that it's going to take to get there. So it costs $9. Nine times, how many people are going for orchard A if it's eight students? How many total people? I meant with me. I did the or I did Orchard A three chaperone. Oh, okay. So then you just swap your swap your answers. So how many people are gonna go for Orchard A if eight students have to go? In total. Eleven in total. So it's gonna cost you how much money to get in there? Ninety nine dollars. Good. Does everyone see how we did that? Good. Okay. So for Orchard B, how many total? So it's ten dollars times. How many total people are going if eight kids are going? Nine total people. Good. So what's my total price for Orchard B going to be? $90. Very good. So Orchard B is cheaper. B is cheaper. Nice job, Julia. Okay. So here comes the not so tricky part. I just like to make it dramatic. We're looking at 12 students. Which one did you think was cheaper, B or A? B again, okay, let's see, let's test it out. So we did our $9 for A times how many total people went? 15, because 12 plus the three chaperones is 15. And then that's gonna get me a total of how many dollars? $135. You hear that, that's good. Thanks, Linda. Okay, next one. We're going to B. If 12 kids are going to B, how many total people are going to Orchard B? 10 times? 
13. So how much total money is it going to be? $130. Nice job saying Orchard be there. Fantastic. Very nice, very nice. Now, 30 people. We have like a whole 30 group of people going. Julia, which one are you thinking? Orchard A. Orchard A. Nice job. Oh, Julia, you and Julia had the same, same thought. Said at the same exact time. Crazy. Okay, so we said Orchard A. Let's prove it by doing some math out. $9 times how many total people are going to A? 33, because 30 students plus the three chaperones, 33, gets me how much money? 297, 297, very good. Then for um, Orchard B, total people, 31, times um, how much, oh, let me try that again. It would be 10 times the 31 people to get a total of 310. Nice job, Julia. 310. So, Orchard A this time is going to be the cheapest because 297 is smaller than 310. Awesome job, my friends. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So now, that was sort of like thinking about it logically. Now we're going to look at two things. One, we're going to look at an equation that represents this story. And then we're going to think about and we're going to look at an inequality that represents this story. Okay? So, if we scooch a dooch down to the next slide, and let's take a look at slide number six. Okay? Six, we now are going to be looking at an equate. Oh, yeah, you could. Get it together. We're going to look at first an equation to look to for this scenario. Nine parentheses n plus three n representing the number of students. Number of students plus three is equal to ten times the number of students plus one chaperone. Okay. Then she said, I want to think about this in terms of an inequality. When is it going to be greater than or less than? Okay, so she wrote the inequality n parentheses or nine parentheses n plus three is less than n ten parentheses n plus one. Okay, that's okay. Go ahead, Haley. So I created this inequality. If we're looking at this inequality in the information that we had. Which one of the orchards does the, does the left half represent? Orchard. That's the total price for orchard what? Nine. A. 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 Very good. I know, I know. It was a little bit confusing. I'm sorry about that. Then, then the, the right side must represent orchard B. Okay? So basically, this inequality is talking about, if we put our symbol in between, what time frame or what frame when a is what compared to b oh, we'll look at the way the symbol goes less than. less than right so when a is in some sort of comparison with b so now we said that the n represents what in this statement b Look at our equation, look at our inequality. What does the n represent? Oh, Caleb? Number of the number of students, very good. The number of students. That was supposed to be a D. There we go, let me put Haley back in. Okay, so n represents the number of students. In this situation, okay, in this situation, what does the equation um, I'm not going to read it again because I always mess it up when I read it. Um, mean. What does the solution to that equation mean? Thinking about it logically, if we were to set them equal to one another, what would it mean in the context of the story? Melina. Very good. 
when we set them equal to each other, we're talking about the cost, right? This equation represents the cost of A, the cost of B. So when we find them and we set them equal to one another, we're going to say that's going to be when they are, the costs are equal. Good. When each orchard would cost the same amount. Okay, so it's that point in time when each of the orchards would cost the same amount of money. Okay, got that. The next piece asks us, what does the situation, what is the solution, what does the solution to the inequality represent? Think about the direction of your symbol Think about what each part represents. What is the solution to the inequality or the solution set to the inequality represents in the store? So it's basically, it comes down to the cost of A, the cost of B, and what does that symbol tell us? Yes. So because that symbol is pointing, I mean like choppy chompy, he's E and B, that means B is bigger. When we're comparing the price of B to the price of A, B is going to be bigger. So when we're talking about the solution, it's the, um, let me think of the word, I want to say the right word. So it's the, it's the set of numbers that would make Orchard A cheaper than Orchard B. So it's the set of numbers that would make, I don't like that. Well, I'm going to write it and then we can discuss it. That would make Orchard A cheaper than Orchard B, okay? So the solution to, this, to the inequality is going to be that set of numbers, right? So from less than five students or less than 17 students or less than 29 students is going to be that set of values that would make Orchard A cheaper than Orchard B. So when you find whatever value that value is going to be, it's going to be cheaper than, uh, make A cheaper than B. Question, Melina. Oh, yeah. Okay. So now it says we need to graph the solution to the system of, in, to, to the, uh, Graph the solution to the inequality on the number line. Be prepared to show or explain your reasoning. So you need to solve this inequality. So that means I need to do some things to each side of it to get what by itself. I want to try to get the, just like when you solve an equation, you try to get the, by the end by itself. Very good. So when you're trying to find the solution, to a, uh, an inequality, you're going to solve it just like you would a, an equation, okay? So I'm going to erase this here. This is what the space is for on your slideshow. You're going to take these and you're going to set them equal to one another. Nine parentheses n plus three is less than 10 n plus one, okay? What am I going to have to do here first before I can start to move things? What would I have to do? Distribute. Distribute. Very good. 9n plus 27 is less than 10n plus 10. Do it. Solve for n.
What's my first move here? I'm solving it just like I would an equation. So first move is I want to do what? Brianna, what, am I, what do I have to do first here? If I want to get the n by itself, what do I have to do with my n? One more time. Mm, we're not going to divide yet because I need to get my ends both to one side, right? So I need to move one of my ends so that I get my ends all to one side. So what would be my first move here, Jason? Subtract 9n. Very good. I would subtract 9n from each side. Minus 9n, minus 9n. I'm going to get 27 is less than um, n plus 10. How do I get my n by itself, Caleb? Minus 10 from both sides. Very good. Minus 10 from both sides. And I'm going to be left with 17 is less than n. So when 17 is less than n, what? n is bigger than 17. No, when n is less than 17, what do we know about our story? When n is less than 17, orchard, what is going to be what? When we're left, when we say n is equal to 17, when n is less than 17, what do we know about our orchards? Which is going to be cheaper? The set of the numbers what that would make solution that would make orchard A cheaper than orchard B. When n is less than 17, then orchard A will be cheaper. Boom. That's what that means. So we need to now graph that system of or that, that oh, inequality. We need to graph that inequality. So if I were to come over here and grab some points, which one of these circles am I going to grab when I want to when I want to graph this solution? Which one? The one that does not have a middle. Why do we think that? I'm not saying you're wrong. Just asking why. Why are we using the open dot? Because does it because it doesn't have the have the, line below. the line below it exactly very good because we don't have that or equal to good and we're gonna put that on what number here on this number line seventeen okay and then which way is my arrow gonna be moving it's less then, so it's going to be very good, Caleb. It's going to be going to the left. Very good, Julia, as well. So you take your line, you line it up. I like to extend it a little bit. You see that this is going to be our solution to this equation. Good. Nice job. Very good. So before we move forward, I have one more question for you. Okay. We got this guy here. Awesome job. Sorry. That was not, I didn't have another question for you. I was ready to move forward. Sorry. I thought I had one more written down, but I did. Okay. Very good. Very good. Very good. So if we look forward now, we're going to look at another equation. This guy's scary. Just like Lando said, he's a little bit, a little bit scary. Okay. We need to solve this equation and check your solution, okay? So what you're going to do is you are going to take, uh, let's see, you are going to take three minutes right now to solve this equation for x. So take this equation, you're going to solve it for x. Let's do it. Get a piece of paper if you need a piece of paper.
symbol? Yes. There is a negative symbol in front of it. Good question. Very good question. Two more minutes, guys. There's a couple first steps that you can do here, so I want you to think, think, think. We have 10 more seconds. There's a couple first moves that we can do here. Let's take a look at what those couple first moves are. What were we thinking was your first move here? Get the X by itself. What's your first step? Distribute the numerator and the fraction. Okay. Uh, we could distribute it to 4x. Excuse the interruption. We have one important announcement. Teachers, please remind your students to bring home all of their devices today and their chargers. Once again, please remind students to bring home all of their devices today with their chargers. And teachers should do the same. I know I have to multiply both pieces by negative five. 
and I distribute my negative 5, I get 4x plus 12 is equal to 20x minus 60. No, plus 60. Almost messed it up. Okay. Now, this is easy. We've got to get our x by itself. Which x are we moving? Which is the 4. So I'm going to do what to each side? Minus 4x. Four, four x. Very good. Nice correction. Minus 4x. We're going to be left with 12 is equal to 16x plus 60. Okay? What are we doing? Subtracting 60 from each side. Minus 60. Minus 60. Negative, negative, negative. 12, no, 12 minus 60 is a negative 48. Very good. Negative 48. That was my attempt at slow mo, it was bad. Um, equals negative 16x. Getting my x by itself, I have to do. Divide by negative 16. Wait, is this, this is, wait, there's a, there's a mistake. Is it? Because it goes in evenly. It's supposed to be two. <laughs> oh, because it's a negative plus a negative. It's a negative 24x. Negative 24. Look at that. I caught it. I caught it. I caught it. Divide by negative 24. Divide by negative 24. We get x is equal to positive 2. Okay. So x is equal to 2. So the, the in this equation, the x is equal to 2. So I'm going to come back to my slides and we're going to look at that. Okay. So we got an x is equal to 2. So now, what I want you to do is I want you to take two minutes right now, the last two minutes, to, in this inequality, I want you to plug a number smaller than two in and see, is it a solution to the inequality? In the inequality, you're gonna choose a number that's greater than two, not the number two. Is it, does it make the inequality true? Yes or no? And then, um, choose two, so plug two in and see, does it, is it a solution? So I want you to take two minutes right now to test three values in this inequality. Plugging in a number that's smaller than two, a number that's larger than two, and then plugging two in and seeing what kind of solution you get. One second, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. NXM, I can't read it on there. Okay, wait, did you see that? Do you see that, Memphis? So let's actually, let's come back together. No, we'll take one more minute. You guys are doing it, you guys are doing it. Okay, so let's, what number did you choose that was less than two? What number did we choose, guys? One. One. Perfect. One. So if we take this inequality and we say four times one plus three divided by five, it's a negative, is less than or equal to four times one minus twelve. Oh my gosh. This is so much work. Okay, we got it. Four times well, we don't have to go all the way. Negative or four times four, right? Four times four divided by five. 16, negative, negative 16 fifths. 
is less than or is less than or equal to four times one is four minus twelve. Four minus twelve. Eight. Negative eight. Now, negative sixteen fifths is negative two point three point two. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it is. I'm just that good. So negative 3.2 is negative 3.2 less than negative 8. Yes. No. 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 Because it's geographically on, listen, geographically on the number line, it is further to the right. So that means it is a larger number. So this is this a solution? No. Now we have to do the same thing, but we're gonna plug in a number that's larger than two. What's your number that's larger than two? Four. Pick some, no, three. Three. Why not four? Five. Because it's bigger. So? Oh, okay, fine, we'll do four. Okay, so we're gonna do four times four minus three, divided by five, negative, is less than or equal to four times four, minus 12. Okay, let's do the left side first. Four minus three is? One. one. Four times one is? What? Plus? It's plus. It's seven times four is? 28. Divided by five is negative. Less than or equal to four times four is minus 12 is four. Is that a true solution? Uh, no. Well, look, one of them is negative. Is four greater than any negative number? Yes. Yes. Is this a solution? Yes. And because we have that or equal to symbol, is two going to work as well? Yes. What I want you to close with for today, listen to me. Wrap this inequality. So wait, if we come down to it, if we, if we get to the end. Good afternoon, everyone. Please listen carefully. You don't want to miss your bus today. It's very cold outside. Also, don't forget to take home your Chromebook and your charger. And grab a lunch on your way out today. What you need what? We'll start with red, purple, and gold team walkers and pickups. Please report to the front of the building for dismissal. Also, routes 18, 19, 20, 21, and 22. Please report to the front of the building Pause. for dismissal. Pause, please. I mean, you can pack up your stuff. Just don't leave yet. Okay, two things. Listen. Monday, we are going through, and at the beginning of the lesson, we are summarizing everything we did today because we did a lot today. Number two. Homework for this evening, slide number 16. Oh, You're, listen, stop it. Stop it. It'll take you two minutes. You're deciding. Listen, you are deciding which one of these inequality, this graph down here, represents this inequality. Solve the inequality. We're gonna, this is gonna be our warm up on Monday. Oh, so it's a homework. I'll give you a hit. It's not one of these two. So it's not homework. It is homework. You just have an answer for Monday. No, I'm coming in. I'm going through it as the warm up. Okay, you got it. It needs to be done. Okay? My friends at home, awesome job today. I know this was today was like a uh, nifty lesson, but we're going to move forward, okay? Um, have a great weekend. I will see you on Monday. I don't know like what it's going to be, but it might be virtual. It might not. Um, I will see you on Monday. Have a great weekend. Please do your homework. Bye, Brianna. Have a good weekend. Is it nice? Not Monday, Tuesday? Wait, are you talking like full birthday? I don't know. I think I, that's so it's not a snow storm. yes. So that's listen. So when they say things like that, that means that we're probably bye, Dillo. Okay, one second. Um. Okay, guys. I will see you on Monday. Bye, guys. Bye, Claire Bye. Bye, Aiden. Okay. So 
Have a good weekend, guys. Um, so when they say things like that, it's usually like, make sure all your stuff is home because you're going to need it. So they, oh, oh that was a, that's why. Yeah, that's why she made that See, announcement I because, did. well, like, yeah. Yeah, I got that. You're that able to sort of, you have to read between the lines of it. It's like, it's you're going to need it, so bring it home. <laughs> Teachers also, I'm going to bring home all my stuff. So because we're probably not going to be here. That's what we're thinking. <sighs> hey, Kaden. Hey, Kaden. Hey, Jessica. See, the thing is, they're always there. They're always there. No, Jessica was very good. Silver team and orange team walkers, if you have to please report to the front of the building.